Tonight, CBS News is exploring across the country how climate change affects your vote and whether elected representatives are aligned with your views on the issue. Research by Yale University shows that 70% of Americans think global warming will hurt future generations. Additionally, two-thirds say Congress should do more about it. Chief investigative reporter Joel Holden is on your corner from South Jersey. Scenes like this in Stone Harbor happen often. Just this past summer, Stone Harbor Administrator Manny Parada said a hell of a lot of rain came down. We had 2nd Avenue. I'd never seen flooded the way it was flooded. Uh, we had almost six, eight inches of water just sitting on 2nd Avenue, which is one of our higher points on the island. All that water had nowhere to go. Rising sea levels due to climate change are being felt more and more here at the Jersey Shore. Some days streets flood without a cloud in the sky. It's very unsettling. So uh, no rain. No nice rain, day. bright sunny day, and if it's a high enough tide, we would be underwater. It seems towns up and down the Jersey Shore are preparing for the worst from what they know about storms and high water events that have already happened. We're told this newer piece of infrastructure has helped Parada and his team with back bay flooding. We basically close the valve whenever we know that there's going to be a high tide. Um, lunar events, you know, uh, consistent northeast winds creates uh, very high tides for us. NASA is projecting sea levels along U.S. coastlines could increase by as much as a foot by 2050. That's only 26 years from now. A majority of people in New Jersey's second congressional district, which includes Atlantic and K-May counties, have concerns. Anthony Lizerowitz is the director of the Yale program on climate change. What we've seen is that Americans have become more convinced that climate change is happening. They're more convinced that it's human caused. They're more worried about climate change and the impacts. Polling from Yale University finds 67% here in this district are worried about climate change. 73% think it will harm future generations. 67% think Congress should do more to address global warming. And 56% say a candidate's views on global warming are important to their vote. Republican Congressman Jeff Van Drew represents the people of New Jersey's 2nd District. What are the pressing needs as it concerns, you know, the coastal environment along the Jersey Shore? Well, there's a lot of needs, and certainly we do worry about rising waters. That is a big deal, um, and we want to make sure that we're doing everything we can to help. Van Drew received high marks from mayors, engineers, and some other officials for his assistance with flood mitigation efforts. But his record in Washington shows a disconnect when it comes to pro-environmental votes. You'll recall Van Drew was first elected a Democrat in 2018. By the end of 2019, he announced he was switching parties to Republican. In 2019, he scored a 93% for pro-environment votes while he was a Democrat. The number has since tumbled. In 2022, he scored 5%, and in 2023, the number was three. In your email, you mentioned my scorecard is not particularly high by some folks on some of the environmental issues as related to climate change and the coast. Well, how do you feel about that number right there? Not to interject, but that number itself uh, doesn't sit well with you? It doesn't sit well with me, but in some cases, because I don't think that the baseline that they use is necessarily accurate. For instance, Van Drew voted against the 2022 Inflation Reduction Act. He told us it indirectly boosts China's economy for its production of lithium ion batteries for EVs. But in the IRA bill, there's more than $70 billion to develop the U.S. battery supply chain, making it more competitive with China, driving down the costs of batteries globally. And for New Jersey, the bill included money for energy savings, new jobs, and protection from future storms. Van Drew says the low scorecard number and his no vote are the result of his disapproval for forcing the use of EVs and a suggestion of banning gas stoves and the installation of offshore wind farms. Our research of his voting shows he's also voted down a 2023 bill amendment allowing the government to mitigate, prepare for, and respond to the threats posed by climate change. Water is starting to find its way. Packed by the bay, work is underway to correct problems with this wildwood crest bulkhead. It's sunny, it's 70, there's not even a breeze right now, and this comes through. 
Yeah, so part of this is, uh, so a lot of it has to do with what well, we have an aging infrastructure. Now as the years go by, you're seeing that it's not sufficient. Some of it has to do with the infrastructure, but some of it is, again, going back to the sea level rising. The bay is trickling through flooding Cardinal Road, and the storm drain can't do its job. This area floods frequently. Because the outflow pipe in the bay is underwater. We receive the majority of our flooding complaints in this area. Mark de Blasio is an engineer for a handful of shore towns, including the Crest and Stone Harbor. You feel like you're in the twilight zone because there's water in the street. Where is it coming from? Well, it's coming from the tide. The tide water is seeking its own level. There's been some uh, patchwork installations done over the years. Not working. No, it's not. Yes, this is the same problem they're having north in Stone Harbor. The pictures of flooded streets, hard to forget. The crest is about to rip out and rebuild the bulkheads. Work on the $6 million high priority project will start this fall and raise the flood protection system to eight feet. As we continue to get these storms and as we continue to get sea level rise, we're actually trying to plan ahead to prevent this and this is years down this is you know to prevent we can see it happening now but it's only going to get worse as the years go on so we're going to take uh, take the time now to address it. The mayor says dunes on the beach will soon be raised to 16 feet in height and the borough plans to install additional pumping stations along the bay. They'll need money. They'll be approaching their congressman Jeff Van Drew for help. Are you getting the help you need? Uh, so we have two uh, FEMA applications and now one for this particular project We're we're getting uh, good vibes, if you will, on on potential FEMA money coming for uh, for this project. FEMA disaster funding has topped 4.3 billion in Van Drew's district since 2004. Areas that took a direct hit from Superstorm Sandy in 2012. But experts say, big picture, Van Drew's opposition to the majority of pro-environment legislation stands in contrast to long-term needs down the shore. And so we can see uh, there are so many different ways that our political system is stuck in gridlock, in, by, in partisanship, and unable to address these kinds of issues. The fact is, is that there are millions of Americans, 28% of Americans are alarmed about climate change, but most of them are not actually expressing their views. Rising sea levels driven by climate change are the motivating factors behind most of these flood mitigation projects. But mayors and engineers up and down the Jersey Shore will tell you that one threat that cannot be eliminated or understated even is the potential for a direct hit by a tropical storm or worse, a hurricane. Joe Holden, CBS News, Philadelphia.